Hello learners and viewers of NIUS. I Piyush Prashad, Academic Officer in Accountancy welcome you in our video interactive session. Today we are going to discuss admission of partner. This is going to be the part 3, we can say as the third session on this very topic. In our earlier topics, in our earlier sessions we have discussed on the goodwill in detail that what are the methods through which we can calculate the goodwill and once the goodwill is calculated how the treatment of goodwill is going to take place in our books of accounts. I have already tried to explain you that what entries are going to be passed by you in case if the goodwill account already appears in the books of the firm as well as when a new partner is going to bring his share of goodwill and capital in cash. Today I am going to explain you that what are the treatment of goodwill when new partner does not brought his share of goodwill in cash or in case if he brought he brought only a part of his share of goodwill in cash and in case if the partner decided to withdraw the goodwill then what entries are going to be done for the same. Together with that as you know ki once the partners are going to be admitted there is going to be the revaluation of assets and the reassessment of liabilities. So how this revaluation account is going to be made and whatever be the profit of losses are going to be there that are going to be distributed among the partners. In case if it is possible we will also try to explain you that how the partners capital accounts are going to be formed in case of the admission of the partnership firm. We have already discussed regarding the treatment of goodwill. One is that in case the goodwill account appears in the firms what will be the treatment and second when a new partner brought his share of goodwill in cash then what will be the treatment. Now we are going to come under another step that is when new partner does not brought his share of goodwill in cash. We will take an example. Suppose there are two partners A and B, they were sharing the profit in the ratio 2 is to 1. They admit a new partner named as C who is going to brought the capital of rupees 50,000 and C is going to join the business for the one fourth share. On the admission of C, goodwill of the firm is valued as rupees 30,000. So, our condition is when new partner does not brought his share of goodwill in cash. If this is going to be the question then what entities we are going to pass in our books of account. The very first thing is first of all you calculate that what is going to be the C share in goodwill because this is the goodwill of the whole firm. The thing is C is going to join the business for the one fourth share. First of all you have one fourth of this 30,000. One fourth is the share total goodwill is 30,000. So this is going to come out to be rupees 7,500. Now C was supposed to brought this amount of goodwill in cash which he has not brought as per the question. So now our entries is going to be cash account debit to C capital account because only the capital has been brought and what is the value of the capital as per the question? This is 50,000. So narration it could be for capital brought by C in cash. Now the goodwill which he has not brought there are two possible conditions. One is either we are going to take the amount of goodwill from his capital in case capital has brought or we can take it from his current account by opening the current account. I am explaining both the conditions to you. So this is going to be our first entry. Second entry is C capital account debit. This is the value of goodwill 7500 to A capital to B capital. In our earlier sessions I have already told you 
that goodwill is always going to be distributed among the old partners in sacrificing ratio and we are going to follow the same concept. So, this 7500 will be distributed among A and B in the sacrificing ratio. So, 2 is to 1 if we are going to divide it comes out to be 5000 and 2500. The other possibility could be that suppose C neither bought his capital then in that case how are we going to take the amount from the capital if capital is not going to be brought then in that case in place of writing the word C capital account what we are going to do is in place of capital we will try to use the word current account and this is only in case when the capital is not going to be brought. If a new partner brings his capital then very well you have the amount from the capital itself. So, the entry for this is going to be first of all the entry for cash, cash account debit to C capital account. Second, as he has not brought any amount of premium in cash, so we will take his share of goodwill from his capital and distribute that amount among the old partners in their sacrificing ratio. This is one case. I will explain you the another case. Keeping in with the same question in our mind, suppose A and B are the partners in the ratio of 2 is to 1, new partner C is going to be admitted for one four share brought the capital of 50,000, goodwill of the firm is valued at 30,000 and I am going to add one more line and that line is C brought only one third of his share of goodwill in cash. So, this is going to be another situation where a new partner is going to bring the goodwill in cash, but not in full only in a parts. Then the very first thing this is the solution answer we will start in a very same way. First of all you are going to find that what is the actual amount to be brought by C. C is going to join the business for one four share total goodwill is 30,000. So, C was supposed to brought 7500 as a share of goodwill, but as the question says C is going to bring only one third of goodwill in cash. What you are going to do is find out the C share. If 7500 is the total goodwill, one third of it going to be rupees 2500. So, this is the amount of cash brought by C and he was not able to bring the rest of the amount which was 5000. So, under this situation, our entry is going to be cash account debit to C capital account to premium account. Premium is the value of goodwill brought by C. 50,000 is the capital given to us in the question. 2,500 is the cash brought by C. Total amount comes out to be 52,500. Now, the next entry is required for distribution. What we are going to do is whatever be the premium that has been brought by the new partner. First of all, you take that value. 2500. Now, the problem is of remaining 5000 which has not been brought by C. So, what we are going to do is we will take that 5000 from his capital or from the current account as the case may be. As capital is available, it is better to take it from the capital. So, the second entry for the same will be C's capital account debit, this is the 5000, and now this total amount will be distributed among A and B's capital account in their sacrificing ratio which is 2 is to 1. So, this amount comes out to be 5000 rupees will be given to A, 2500 will be given to B. In our earlier session I have explained you goodwill not brought, goodwill is brought by the partner in cash but distributed privately, no entry. If you brought the goodwill, distribute it among the partners in the sacrificing ratio. If it does not brought the goodwill, take the amount from the capital or current account. If he brought only a part of the goodwill in cash, then whatever be the part he brought in cash, have it with the name of the premium and the remaining amount which he has not brought, take it from the capital account. Take a total of it, distribute it among the partners in their sacrificing ratio. Now learners, if old partner decide to withdraw the goodwill which has been brought by the new partner into the business what entries would you pass? Do you know this thing? No? Fine. I am going to tell you. In case a new partner joined the business, 
pays a certain amount of goodwill, pays a certain amount of goodwill as well as the capital and the partners decided to withdraw the goodwill. Now, you have to be very, very careful that how much goodwill is going to be brought by the partner and how much goodwill is going to be withdrawn by the partner. If half of the goodwill is withdrawn, pass the entry with the half goodwill. If whole of the goodwill is withdrawn, pass the entry with the whole goodwill. I will explain you with the help of an example. There were two partners A and B. They were sharing the profit in the ratio of 5 is to 15 we can have a further solution as 1 is to 3. They are going to admit new partner as C who is going to join the business for one fifth share and is going to brought a capital of 1 lakh and goodwill of 20,000. Side by side it is given half of the goodwill is withdrawn by old partners. If this is the case, then what entries you are going to pass in your books of accounts? First entry is going to be cash account debit to C capital and to premium account. Capital brought by C is 1 lakh given to you in the question. Premium brought by C is 20,000. So, this total cash is 1 lakh 20,000. Once this premium is there with us, distribute this amount among the partners. It is premium account debit to A capital to B's capital. Now, again and again I am making you to remember always distribute the amount of premium in the sacrificing ratio. Calculate the sacrificing ratio. You know the formula very well. It is old ratio minus new ratio. So, this 20,000 is going to be distributed as nothing is mentioned in the question. So, old ratio itself is going to be the sacrificing which is 1 is to 3. So, 5,000 rupees will be given to A and 15,000 rupees will be given to B. The next step is half of the goodwill is withdrawn by the old partners. In case if they withdraw the goodwill, you are going to debit them. A's capital account debit, B's capital account debit to cash account. Half of 5000 is 2500, half of 15000 is 7500 and the total is 10. Now, take a look. When the new partner brought the cash, what we have done is we have debited the cash because cash comes to the business and the rule of accounting says whatever comes to the business is going to be debited. So, once the cash came, we have debited the cash. Now, once the cash goes out as they have taken out the money, the cash is going to be credited and the rule again is going to be applied. Whatever goes out from the business is going to be credited. So, these are the entries which you are going to take care of once you are going to pass for the treatment of goodwill. I hope this treatment of goodwill is going to be clear. Now, once this topic is clear, you know whenever a new partner is going to be admitted into a business, he may or may not agree with the value of assets and liabilities that are going to be shown in our books of accounts. He may say that I am not going to accept these values. These are overvalued or undervalued. So, before the admission of the partners, old partner decide to revalue the assets and to reassess the liabilities. Once more, assets are always revalued while the liabilities are going to be reassessed and for that they are going to prepare an account known as a revaluation account. Whatever be the profits or losses are going to be there out of it, those profits or losses will be distributed among the old partners in their old profit sharing ratio. Now, I will explain you the format of the revaluation account so that in case if you got such kind of things you would not find any problem while solving the questions. Because whenever a complete question of a partnership comes to you, the three things which you are going to do is a revaluation, capital account, 
and a balance sheet. So, now how we are going to prepare a revaluation account? It is a T shape account on which as you used to have it in normal cases, this is the column for our particulars, amount, particulars, amount. Left hand side is a debit side, right hand side is a credit side. On this side we are going to use the word to, on this side we are going to use the word buy. Now, whenever there is a decline in a value of an asset, you are always going to have it on a debit side. As the rule says, all expenses and losses are debited. So, on this side you are going to write to decrease in value of assets. For example, there was a stock which was shown in our books of account as 10,000 and as per the new value it is going to be 8. So, if the value of the stock is going to decrease by 2, you are going to write it on a debit side. If some depreciation is going to be charged on the machines and equipments, you are going to write it on a debit side. If some provisions are going to be made on the debtors for bad and doubtful debts, you will write it on the debit side. The second thing is increase in value of liabilities. Now, in case if the value of the liability increased, there were some creditors which were not traced and some value increases, then in that case it is a loss for a business, it is going to be written on a debit side. The banks put some interest or some penalty, then in that case it is a loss for a business and will be shown on the debit side. In case the things are opposite, whatever we have written on the debit side, that is in place of decrease if there is going to be increase in value of assets. Say for example, earlier we were valuing the stock at 20,000 and the new value is going to be 25. So, if there is an increase in the value of a stock by 5,000, you will write buy stock 5,000. In case there were some bad debts which we are not able to have, they are recovered, it is a profit for us we are going to write it on a credit side. If the value of the machine is going to be appreciated, then whatever be the appreciation is there, you are going to write it on a credit side. Same is the case with the liability, decrease in value of liabilities. There were certain creditors and we are not able to trace them. If we are not able to trace them, no payment is going to be made then in that case that is going to be your profit. There were certain amounts which a uh, bank is going to give us a form of the relaxation in form of the interest in form of penalties and so on. If the bank has given those relaxation, it is a decrease in the liability, it will be credited. So, all the profits are going to be written on the credit side and anything which is going to decrease the value of your profits is going to be written on the debit side. Now, as you know, you have to make the total of both the sides and whichever side is going to be greater, the same total is going to be shown on the other side. For example, we are presuming that credit side total is going to be more. So, the same total is going to be written on this side and in that case, the balancing figure over here is going to be taken as a profit and you will write to profits on revaluation and whatever the profit is going to be distribute among the old partners in the old issue. We are presuming over here that our old partners are A and B. So, whatever be the profit is there distribute. In case if the debit side is more, then we are going to suffer a loss and the value will be loss on revaluation. Same if there are two partners A and B distribute that loss among the partners in their old issue and this you will be able to make a revaluation account. In a question if they ask you to pass the journal entries, then you should remember that how to pass the entries from the account. This is totally a different thing I am letting you know. In normal cases what we used to do is first of all we pass the entries and then from the entries we are going to prepare a ledger. But suppose if the ledger is already prepared by you, you are having an account with you and they ask you to pass the entries 
then how are you going to pass the entries? See, it is very simple. Take this as your heading. Our heading is revaluation account and your first entry is revaluation account debit to whatever be the name of the asset to stock, to bad debt provision, to machinery in case if the value of asset decreases. Second entry, in case the value of liabilities increases, some creditors increases, revaluation account debit to creditors interest is going to be paid to a bank, revaluation account debit to interest on bank loan and so on. In case of profit, revaluation account debit to A capital to B capital. You are not going to use this word, this is going to be your narration. Otherwise, the entries will be revaluation account debit to A capital to B capital. Now, it is a vice versa or a reverse case. In case, entries for this side is going to be made, then the arrow will be this, shift on to this side, take this you, your thing as a debit. If there is an increase in a value of asset, say stock increases, then a stock account debit to revaluation account. If the value of the machine increases, machinery account debit to revaluation account. In case if the value of liabilities decreases, then creditors account debit to revaluation account and so on. And in case there is a loss, A capital debit, B capital debit to revaluation account. Again, this is going to become your narration. So, in case if the question is going to ask you to pass the entries also, this is going to be a one of the very simple way to calculate or to have the entries with the help of the ledger. Once you are able to have the revaluation account, the third thing which is there with us is a formation of capital account that how the capital accounts are going to be prepared in case of the admission of the partner. Now, this is going to be a very typical and important thing which I will try to explain you with the help of something. In case of the partner's capital account, what you are going to do is, first of all make sure ki whether it is a capital account fixed or current fluctuating. In case if it is fixed, then you are going to prepare the two different account fixed capital and a current account. In case if it is fluctuating, then there is no problem, we can have one single account. So, what is going to be the exact format and what we are going to write in it? The first column is going to be for the name of the partners, this is for particulars and then we are going to have some remaining column for the name of the partners. We are taking the name as A, B, C and this is going to be our particulars. Same is the case with on the debit side also one column for particulars and we are going to have three column for the name of the partners. This is A, B and C. Again, this is our particulars. You know, this is the debit side and this is going to be the credit side. We expect that we are always going to have the credit balance, but it can be a debit balance also depending upon the question. So, very first thing what we are going to do is we will write by balance brought down. This is going to be the capital balance of only A and B given to you in the question. In case there is a debit balance, write it on the debit side to balance brought down. It can be either of A and B altogether or it could be of A, it could be of B. So, only one of the situation is going to arise in your question. Either you are going to have the credit balance or you may have the debit balance. Then, in case if any reserve is given to you in the balance sheet, then general reserve. See, it is one of the thing which has not been explained anywhere is and as well as it is not going to be given in the question itself. No one is going to ask you to distribute the reserve, but you know that this is the reserve which has been generated by the partners due to their hard work and labor and this reserve or the profit belongs to old partners. So, at the time of admission of a new partner, this reserve should be distributed compulsorily among the old partners in their old ratio. Even though if nothing has been given to you in the question, but a reserve appear on the liability side of the balance sheet, distribute that amount among the partners. As we are having two partners as the old partners, we are presuming ki these two are the old and C is going to be the new one. So, what we will do? will distribute the reserve among the partners A and B. Then, 
in case if there is a revaluation profit this is on this side again the partners A and B. Now, the new partner brought cash. So, this is going to be the capital of new partner which we are going to write under the column C. Then if the new partner brought the premium, this is also premium among A and B and again and again I am telling that this is in the sacrificing ratio. In case if there is a loss on revaluation, this is on this side and I am mentioning loss among A and B. In case if the partners withdraw the goodwill, this is for drawings again A and B and so on. Then after that what you are going to do is make the total of both the sides whichever side is greater and the left out will be the balance. This is the balance carry forward or we can have it as a carry down among A, B and C and this is going to be the final balance which is going to be transferred to the balance sheet. So, this is the way you are going to prepare a capital account. Start up from the debit side or credit side as the things given to you in the question. If any reserve is given, distribute that reserve among the partners. If any old goodwill account appears in the books, write it out on the debit side. If there are revaluation profit, distribute it on the credit side. If there are losses, write it on the debit side. When the new partner brings the cash as capital, buy cash and it will be written among the new partner. When he brought the premium, buy premium among A and B. In case if the goodwill is withdrawn or any other drawings are made to cash, it is drawings whosoever has taken out the money. Make the total of both the sides and the remaining is the balance and this balance will be transferred to the balance sheet. So, learners I hope now you are able or will be in a position to prepare the appropriate capital account. As you know that this is a one of the very important aspect or one of the stages while solving out a question. Once you have the revaluation account, secondly the capital account and third is the balance sheet. So, these are the three things which are supposed to be there. In case if the capital calculated by you is wrong, definitely your answer is going to be wrong which I do not expect from you. So, learners I hope the capital account is going to be quite clear to you and you will use it while solving the different type of questions. I will thank you for listening us very patiently and putting the number of questions. Thank you. हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए NIOS देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का NIOS से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर NIOS के साथ आप भी जुड़िए NIOS के संग